Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Camille Heron after her win at the 2015 IAU 100K World Championships. Camille, you've had a very special day. You have three beers in your hand. <laughs> What's the best beer you've had so far? Uh, this triple is pretty good. <laughs> Along with that, you won a world championship today. Uh, how does that feel? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of sinking in. Uh, I was actually more excited about the the team title. Uh, I when I heard that 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 we were uh, that we were like I guess on pace to like win the team title I think that that gave me more incentive to, to keep me going even though I was not feeling too well so um, I was real excited to, to just do the best that I could to uh -huh. help the team so and it did matter because the yeah. third place woman on Sweden who was the, the running up team yeah was well ahead of Megan Arbogast who was the third woman on the US yeah. team and your time gap on Kai Schaberg <laughs> made a difference as did Sarah Bardstrong exactly yeah I was so. I was real excited to hear that it was cumulative time because I was like I was like oh gosh you I gotta run as fast as I can mm -hmm. you know like because it all evens out and so when I um passed Megan uh coming in towards the finish and I was cheering her on she's cheering me on and I'm thinking my gosh I sure hope we win the team title <laughs> so I was probably more excited about that than than actually like winning and so um so yeah, I definitely like the team aspect for sure. You were definitely excited early in the race. I think you went out in uh, three, uh, three twenty-four. Yeah, three twenty-four. Yeah. So you were like sub six fifty pace. Yeah, yeah. So so um so I had I had done my research and looked at past results to see what mm -hmm. the the seven hour women had run, and so um Ann Trayson had run three twenty-two through halfway, and so. Uh, and then I think another sub, seven hour woman had run like 326 through halfway. So I knew that I had to hit somewhere between 722, 726 okay. to have a shot at sub seven hours. Um, and so I was, I was feeling great and everything. Uh, what happened was I actually started puking on this, uh, from about 65 K and onwards. Uh, it was like every time I tried to take a gel, it was like mm. I puked it back up. So, um, so I just had to, I just had to stop taking gels. I just, just stuck with liquids. Uh, and so I felt like my energy level tanked and, um, I just couldn't keep maintaining. It was almost like my legs felt like rocks. Like oh. I just wasn't getting the energy. <clears throat> and so my, my husband told me that I was on pace to keep getting the American record until like about the last 20 K. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know, I was just, I, I was like, I could not take gels. It was just, it was just like my body just said no, no more gels. No so, more gels. Uh, so yeah, I've just got to, you know, I've just got to like kind of tweak my energy now uh, was that a problem at mad city at all or no so so what so what happened at mad city was i took pretty much like very minimal amount of energy i was only taking one gel every 10k and so uh i started feeling hungry about five hours into the race mm -hmm. and so everybody told me that that meant that i wasn't getting enough energy and i needed to take more gels so i tried to take in more energy here mm -hmm. but i hit a point about 65k where it was like my body said no more it said too much too much so i just couldn't take in any more energy Cause before that you had a very step <laughs> hang i know because every time you came across the start yeah. finish line you had a gel in your mouth literally yeah, like for the first, yeah so, like five six laps exactly yeah so i was taking i was taking a gel uh every 10k uh and then i was taking sports drink at the other station okay. and then i switched to coke and when i switched to coke and then i i was basically taking an extra gel uh every other loop so i think i i was trying to get in like an extra four gels for the race uh and we thought that that would be you know to to try to bump up my energy mm -hmm. level uh, but I just hit a point where it's like I I've never puked in a race. I started it's the first time. All right. I, I started puking and I was just like, oh my gosh, I've never puked before. So so I told myself just to stay calm. I said, okay, just stay calm, just keep maintaining. You know, if I'm hitting 45, 46 minutes, it's okay. I've got mm -hmm. enough of a cushion on on whoever I think they told me I was like at least 10 minutes ahead of second place. So even though like I that that American record starts to slip away from me uh, when I heard that that we were on pace to win the team title, mm -hmm. I said, okay, just just stay calm, keep maintaining, you know, just just concentrate on just trying to get the win, and you know, I'm still going to run a fast time. And you did. <laughs> you ran 
<laughs> what are you in it? What was your final time? Uh, like 7.08. Which is tremendously <laughs> fast. Like, you ran a fast debut. That's a whole nother level yeah, up. Yeah, smelling my beer Yeah, you better drink some of that. <laughs> <laughs> what is, I mean, I know you were yeah. shooting for sub 7, but that's... Still yeah, pretty incredible. So, yeah, so I, I started passing some of the men on, on, on Team USA and and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to think of it because I know that they're all like really good, but uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm just born to do this. Uh, you know, I just got to just tweak the energy thing. So you're not swearing off 100K races, no, no? No, I actually felt like this mentally... And physically, I was definitely more prepared for this race. And um, I'm definitely, I'm still going to be pursuing that American record. I just got to keep tweaking. I'm, I'm still very ripe at ultras. And, you know, I've just got to, like, tweak a couple of things. And um, I'm going to nail this one of these days. I'm just going to keep trying. Nice. So, Do you have yeah. anything uh, planned for the rest of the year? Any, any major goals? Um, so I actually, I committed to the US 50K team in uh, Doha mm -hmm. in December. Uh, so uh, yeah, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape right now. I mean, I went through in 324 today, so. So do you happen to know <laughs> offhand what the American 50K record is? Uh, yeah, so so I, I mean, I've got goals to go after every single ultra record. I think I was under, uh, American record pace for 50 miles today, but they didn't have a 50, 50 mile mm -hmm. uh, marker on the course. And it would have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I was, I, I was trying to do the math of when I hit 80K, and I was at like maybe like 530 something, and the American record's like 540. Yeah, you were, you were like I, 535 or something, and it was clear that that yeah. little bit of difference you would have been under, but. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got my sight on trying to, uh, you know, it's really important for me to make sure that I'm rested for the races. I know that there's going to be lots of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be wanting me to go to their race or do this, this and that trail race. But, uh, you know, I'm 33. I've only got like about, you know, a five or 10 year window to go for all the American records on the road or the track or what have you. So um, I've just got to be very careful to plot and plan. Uh, my races and uh, you know make sure I'm fresh you know got a good fast course uh, so if anybody wants to contact me about like whatever <laughs> whatever I mean I don't I really don't know too much about ultras and like what the fast courses are so uh, if anybody wants to like pinpoint me to like what races to do like whether internationally or domestic I really appreciate that uh, but are, you, are you capping that at 100k <laughs> for the time being uh, no I so so from what I mean I want to get the 50k the whatever 40 50 mile 100k and they tell me that if I wanted to go for like a 12 hour record and the 100 mile record uh, but they told me that beyond a certain point that it can start to uh, hurt your marathon time or so, I don't know I mean I might keep training like a marathoner I mean I feel comfortable I felt like I was definitely like speedy and fresh and yeah. like prepared today I think it was just a whole and you're energy. training like a marathoner with a pretty heavy volume as well it's yeah, not just exactly. running 60 or 70 miles a week yeah so I felt like I felt like um, going into this race we just mainly focus a lot more on keeping my volume really high and um working on my aerobic capacity, but I was still doing some marathon training, uh, not quite as much quality as I would do for the marathon. Uh, but, you know, I'm also, I've qualified for the Olympic marathon trials. So I, you know, <laughs> I still, I want to try to, my, my PR is 237. I still want to try 237.14. I want to get that sub 237 and try to see if I can get the A standard for the yeah. Olympic trials. So, uh, so that's another goal. You know, I want to maybe run the Houston marathon in January and try to get that sub 237. So I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. You can shape. mix that up with a 50, like now going to the yeah. 50K distance. Exactly. You'll be the diesel locomotive coming into the, the yeah, marathon. Yeah, yeah. So it's, for me, I mean, I, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity. I, I, I like to do a, a big race before I have a big race. So, <laughs> <laughs> Just keep so it I, thought, I thought I would do Doha in December and then six weeks later bounce back for Houston and try to get the A standard there and then run the Olympic trials in February. So, um, And then maybe a little break? 
Uh, well, another, I mean, I want to get the 50K American record, and that's uh, 313. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I can be in like, you know, sub 240 shape, then I'd probably have a pretty good shot. So uh, I've got to kind of like plot and plan, you know, like even if I ran, I'm, yeah, even if I ran the Olympic trials and then maybe a couple of weeks later bounced back and did like um, Cowtown 50K, which is like really close. And um, that that might be a possibility, yeah. but I I mean I've obviously got really crazy endurance, and so I'm I mean I run back to back marathons and run really fast. So um yeah. I'm <laughs> well, sounds like you're excited about this, Camille. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably more excited about the beer right now. Well, um, let's enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta enjoy this beer. It's really really pretty good. The trap. So. Is that the only Trappist brewery in the Netherlands? There you go. Oh, really? Yeah. Along wow. with nine in Belgium? Oh, yeah. Six. Check that out. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's only got 8% alcohol. Oh, only. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> we better go I've find something drinking, a little stronger. I've been drinking these 9% beers, so this oh is a little weak. <laughs> well, congratulations, Camille. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy Brian. your celebration. <laughs> I will, for sure.